the national to me if you have a horse who's a bit on the edge a bit tapped there's potential there and then later that evening I saw Leighton Aspel in a bar dancing with his ale and swinging in the air so he hadn't <laughs> broke his collarbone <laughs> You have Willie winning yeah, the national. I didn't even think about that. You have Willie Mullins winning the national. I don't have him in the first five. Hello and welcome to Inside Track the Debate, William Hill's weekly YouTube show where we bring together four personalities from the world of horse racing to discuss and debate some big topics in the sport. My name's Kate Tracy and joining me are three familiar faces to the show. To my left, Barry Garrity, Matthew Batchelor and Jane Mangan. So we've got a very different ensemble, but you've all been on the show before. Now, what I want you to discuss on this week's show is it your top five grand national predictions. So we've got something a little bit different for you. We haven't got five names for you to rank in order. So an easy task, I'm pretty sure that you'll all agree. The first five home in the grand national. So you've got your whiteboards. Please take it away. Right, guys, I feel that we're going to have a fair amount of disagreement in this. But if you've got your whiteboards ready to go in three, two, one. What? Well, we talk about abbreviations, Batch, but even like, so, that is... See, Jane Look at is, this situation here. Jane is the model pupil here. To be fair, teacher's pet. <clears throat> Professional my, amateur. My pen's, my pen's running out, so I've got to say... The, on the first episode, that, yeah. good Does that job. make me conditional, maybe? <laughs> Claiming seven. Claiming uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, claiming yeah. seven. But Whereas you're down to the three down. pounds. That's a lovely bit of joint writing you've got yeah. there. Thank you. I still, still from my school days. It's nearly but calligraphy. Not capitals. Right. So Jane's got Corak Rambler to regain his crown then, or to retain it, I should say. Max. I am Maximus. I am, Ma of course. I am on first name terms. And Barry, yeah. who have you got as number one to win? Meeting of the Waters. Ooh, okay. Right. I feel that we should start with Jane, though. The defending mm. champion, Jane. Corak Rambler. Self explanatory, really. Go on then. He ran awesome in the Gold Cup. Mm -hmm. I think he's been very fairly treated by the handicapper. I think he was idle when he won last year. He absolutely hacked up if you watch back the replay. And uh, I, when I was watching him in the Gold Cup, I genuinely thought he had a great chance coming down the hill. So if that's a replication of his run and how he likes Aintree, I, I just see him as a different class. He is, isn't it? And he's the kind of horse where you never feel that you get to the bottom of him. But... I just wonder in the Gold Cup, did we actually get to the bottom of him there? He did have a hard race, but obviously you're not concerned about the time. I think that was even on ground that wasn't at his best. Mm. I think he'll be better. Not that Aintree will be anything other than soft, but it won't be like the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very confident in him. I, I, I would rarely say that about a horse going back to win another race, but usually they have more weight than this guy has. Yeah, and he is well in, Barry, on the pounds and weights. Mm. Is he in your list? I can't see your, your list from here, Barry. So yeah, he's uh, second. Second on yeah. your list, then. Amazing, so yeah. Yeah. A pair, pair runner-ups here. Yeah, so you, so you've got the Rambler as second, as does Barry. So yep. I'm guessing the pair of you two. Currently, at the time of recording, he's a seven to two shot. Now, of course, if we talk in terms of backing him, though, Batch, would you be backing him at that price? No. Each way you'd be backing him. No. <laughs> yeah. No, he's not enough. Would you not be concerned that he's a bit deliberate over his fences? I Just with the current Grand National speed. It's it's not I am Maximus go, we're talking about. I am Maximus. I just think them fences, they'll either go one way or the other. They'll either make him... Or they'll put him... Yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Mm. yeah, I won't put him out of the race, as no. a, out of competitiveness. That's I, I'd fear from that he just, to me, he doesn't... He hangs he likes, in the air a bit, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, he likes the bite from me to a horse. A horse who's going to grow over the national fence, I would always find a horse who's taking a chance, a fellow who's too brave they can soften him as in he has, he has respect for them but for me I, I just fear I am Maximus that he could just find himself a bit back in the fields mm. I'd, I'd, I'd rather yeah I'd be, I'd be worried for him now but I was probably worried for Vanilla last year and he ran a great race so I'm not a great judge yeah no but he but sometimes it, I say they'll either go one or two mm. ways yeah so. but Vanier if I remember correctly did he have a kissing spine operation before the race last year that saw his jumping improve but I just wonder if I am Maximus if it's in his head more so than anything else. I'd say there's a good book going on in his head. Mm. There's a hundred percent. You'll know by the time you get to Beechers. Yes, what your fate is then um, with him. So maybe an in running type of horse to be siding with. But sorry, Batch, not to not to drag your main selection down <laughs> all that much. Would you would you like to reinstate his case again? <laughs> no, you just I'm gonna rub it off. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm sticking with him. Terms I'm sticking gone with him. Now. You're sticking with yeah. him though. Yeah. Happy with him. Yeah. The and batch, then, the batch would get him to jump. Wouldn't you just <laughs> You wouldn't want me on it. <laughs> What's your experience over the national fences? Remind me. Oh, we have won a national yet. Yeah. Swedish. 
A Swedish <laughs> national. That's my experience. <laughs> you, you've ridden over the national fences, Only over the, yeah, in the beacher and the topham. Yeah, That's yeah. How'd you get on? Third in the topham, pulled up in the beacher. I had a couple of close calls in the national. I was going to ride one because I'd thought Leighton Asper broke his collarbone. I was hoping he'd broke his collarbone. <laughs> and he walked out the wham room and it was, said, yeah, he's definitely broke his collarbone. I'm going to get the cool up. Rung Nick Gifford because I'd won on the horse. He said, yeah, you can ride it. And then later that evening, I saw Leighton Aspel in a bar dancing with his ale and swinging in the air, so he hadn't <laughs> broke his collarbone. So, so you knew at that point... So that was the end of my ride. You were not getting the call no. up there after that. <laughs> you didn't have a eureka moment and head over to Lash and maybe assess his collarbone. <laughs> I did try, yeah. I couldn't reach his collarbone. It's quite tall. <laughs> I mean, Barry, who have you got as number one again? Meeting of the Waters. He yeah. was So he was third in the Ultima. It was a bit keen. Mm. First run back since Christmas, really, because he unseated at the first in the Dublin Racing Festival. So it was the first run back in a while. Um, he was very impressive when he won the Paddy Power at Christmas. And he was keen again that day. He was, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't mind that. Keen is... No. Keen is... Harry, settle him. <laughs> I won't have to settle him. Someone else's job. <laughs> I just think he's potentially... He's a horse to handicap or hasn't had a full look at. Mm. Um, I would have felt the same for Maller Mission, but 11 4 Carrick Rambler, I would see giving him a pound lead of the edge. Um, but I just think Meeting of the Waters, he is only seven, um, but just could be ahead of the handicapper. And Carrick Rambler, I would agree with Jane, the English handicapper has treated him kindly yeah. for a horse who won it last year. Who absolutely um, bolted him. He did. Him. Yeah, he did. Um, and you'd have to have him in the equation. But you'd always look, for me, you'd always look for something that's potentially well handicapped. Mm. And I think meeting of the waters, he's the standard horse. I, I, I know I put him up at the, the weight stanch as well. Um, but he wasn't guaranteed around then, but he's looking like he's in now. What number is he? He's 30, is he? Is it? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So well, you're absolutely yeah. fine then in terms of a run. Now, Jane, you've gone down the route of experience in the race and over the fences mm. then. So is that just sort of the the nice, sensible, steady approach towards the big spruces? So I think that has proven themselves. M- maybe I'm playing it safe, right? Because I just think Manila or uh, Noble Yates is solid mm. um, and... He- he didn't disgrace himself at Cheltenham. He's been in good form. And he's not an old horse. He's been around a long time, but he's not an old horse. Obviously, Vanilla is self-explanatory runner-up last year. I thought Manila Indo was a banker in the Banks race at Cheltenham. And yeah. it was really frustrating that that didn't happen. He he was out of sorts and he didn't look well in Down Royal. Um, he was. I just don't think he was right before Christmas. And Henry's horses have only started really coming into form February, March, April. Rachel Blackmore around there. I think I just he's a gold cup caliber horse. He's top drawer. And I know he's near obviously retirement. But, you know, Neptune Collange did it. Yeah. And retired on the spot. I think he's just a if he takes the fences, he's got class. Um and Limerick Lace, Magical Light was second in the race. It's been, I'd say, seventy years since the mayor's won the race. Mm-hmm. But I was impressed with her at Cheltenham. If it'll be soft ground, I just think she'll stay very well. And they're they're three solid stairs that might find themselves out of their ground, maybe crossing the road, but finish well. These two are the class horses for me. The class acts, like you say, the gold cup, literally, calibre horses then of the pair of those two. And of course, Noble Yates, I think we can put into that bracket then as well. So yeah, that is a very solid list though, Barry, that Jane's got there. But are there any sort of wild cards that you've got in yours? Yeah. Foxy I've, Jacks is a wild Foxy Jacks yeah. is a wild yeah. Yeah. Would you yeah. like to ride he, him he around was, He was another no. one for the banks as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he's, he, yeah. you have to, tr- like the national is never straightforward. This, and he's you know, not straightforward. No, he's not. But but <laughs> it goes back to what you say, I am Maximus. You. The national to me, if you have a horse who's a bit on the edge, a bit tapped, there's potential there. Um, so I think I think he could run a big race. Would, would you want to ride him? Not a hope. <laughs> who's going to yeah. get the call up? Who's going to uh, put the hand up for Foxy? Who Gavin Bruder gets Gavin on Bruder very gets well. On really well. Yeah. In the cross country. Yeah, he, he, he knows the horse's quirks. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was turning to Kerry National. It was a good run. He's um, getting better as he's getting hand. older. He is. He is. He's no. jumped erratically to his right. Yeah, I'd, put my name any direction. So, I'd put my name forward. Would you? Just to ride in it, yeah. <laughs> Just to ride in it, I've even it on before, Foxy yeah. Jacks. Oh. There, was a, there was a horse going in the National one year. I won't say who trained it, but I rang him up. No one wanted to ride it. A few people had turned it down. And I said, I'll ride it. <laughs> Just to be in, like, involved in the whole that pageantry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair play to you. And it fell at the first, so it was job done. <laughs> <laughs> 
How it's about like, your list? Uh, my list is very rogue. So, anyone who knows me. Mm hmm. Glenn go, go for it. Explain that. So, uh, happily. So, I am a big trends person. Anyone who knows me knows from my previous that I love to follow trends. So, last night, I took it upon myself ahead of today to run the trends uh, factoring and, of course, last year's winner then as well, seeing if it skewed the trends at all. I was very fortunate. This is a, a weird after time clang. It found me Vanier last year to finish second then in the race. So it's something that I still trust. And the five horses who ticked the most boxes were said five in this order as well. Glenn Gooley was the one where I know he prepped last time out over two more four, but in recent years, that hasn't been a negative, of course. I know the cross country wins with Tiger Roll, then the Ultima, of course, and of Corrat Rambler hasn't been seen to as optimal effect in recent years, but you go back to uh, rule the world and all, and they prepped over two and a half. So he is the one for me. And his biggest question is the stamina doubts. But if you go back to his run in the Thyestes, mm. there was no sort of stamina doubts there. That was only his second go over three I miles. I couldn't have him that day because no, I didn't think no chance he'd get the trip on that ground. Mm. Like he was, to me, he was the shock of the day. I think I was on air with Barry and yeah. Barry said, no, no chance he'll get the trip. And as the race was progressing, we were like, are we going to have to eat our words here? <laughs> Especially, and even the way he was ridden, he was ridden as if trip the wasn't an issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. The the way that he battled yeah. and to to run that blinding a race. And like you say, that I, I was amazed how well he saw out the trip. And he's a three mile point winner, pulled up in his only other start over three miles. But that to me confirms stamina doubts are no sort of issue for him that, well, hopefully, this is a whole different test. the national test. is different again. It is a whole different mile. test, yeah. And it's, it's probably, like, with the modifications, for me, it's it's more like a Welsh national now. It's a proper, mm. like, for Neptune Collange to win at that time as a 12-year-old. Whereas if you go back in history, like, like Monty's pass, 10-7, didn't get the trip in a Galway plate over 2 miles 6. Now, that's a stiff, very stiff finish in Galway. But... Ambry House didn't get three miles particularly well either. Mm. It was a non stairs race where it's very different now. You need to be, it's, it's a serious level of stamina. It really suits your panda boy. Wouldn't it just? I just, I just I, think he's a bit, a bit tight in the market for what he's achieved in his career. And he needs one to come out. One should come out to get him in. He's 35 on the list. But like you say, his price. It's because it's been the aim for him for so long where I actually fancied him for the Ultima. They didn't run him in that in the end then, didn't even declare him for it. But I had fancied him for that, but he's just got that time off and I wonder if that might be a slight regret then for him. One horse that will say though, Kitties. I'm, I know one nickname now on your list, <laughs> Kitties, but again, we're not sure to run for him. He is 38 on the list. Yeah, I've just gone, i just like to see Christian, what he's... What's going through that lot. Yeah, just sentimental, really. I just, mm -hmm. I'd love to see him run well for Christian and the but family. But has a habit of running well and yeah, it does, yeah, caps, yeah, it does, yeah. And, yeah, and will stay, yeah, yeah. stay all day, stay. yeah. Will he get a round? That's the biggest question. He's, Jen, I'll probably throw this one to you actually. He's Nathaniel now. You're, you're already. He's, all, he, he's already defied everything he should yeah. be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in air when he won. Was the Scottish yeah. national mm -hmm. small fences and he was going low and I was thinking, oh he Lord. does go low, but yeah. he rarely falls, mm -hmm. if ever. I lined, up behind, I lined up with Tiger All thinking the first year he won it, yeah. thinking I'm done. I follow him. Yeah. <laughs> and he hurdled his way around. So yeah. he's he's already defied everything he should be. He could win. That. He's going back to what Barry said though. It's it's not so much as a jumping test now. Mm. So it's still, I do give it credit, it is yeah, a but, big test, yeah. but it's not what it was. Horses get away with a lot more than they used yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. And he, he is low. I, whoever rides and then, if it's Jack Tudor or whoever, they're going to have to sit tight. <laughs> but if he does, though, he's gonna, he rides him so well, knows him so well. So if he does get a run, he will stay. Like you said, Jane, he defies everything. So, yeah, he'll be uh, the other one then for me. Right, who have we missed out? that we haven't spoken about yet. So Van, I'm guessing, is Vanier or Vanillier. Yeah, yeah we agree on Van. James, James and James yeah, you agree on a lot here. Yeah. Fair, I there just is actually a fair late night, uh, late night late pass. Late night pass, yeah. Late night pass, oh, really? That'll yeah. be some story in itself. Yeah, it has experience around there. Mm -hmm. um, good winner of the cross country back in December. Um, another one just left field. Yes. Because it's not, like Mon Mo won at 100 to 1. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to pick the the fancy ones but of the outsiders was just one I thought now with experience um, I could make a case for it yeah 
And then for the story, of course, the husband and wife story yeah. then as well with Gina Ellis slash Andrews and Tom Ellis, of course, taking out the proper trainer's license or rules trainer's license then as well then for him. I mean, the stories, we always expect stories in the national, don't we, Batch? But I mean, for the amount of horses we've got on our list, there are no end of stories here for them. But I think I agree with you. I think Kitty's Light will probably be the best story, best story of all. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. One story we haven't mentioned is your Gallia de la Toe yes. could help the Skeletons to a championship if she mm. managed to place or win. Wouldn't she just? And we talk about the mares and their record in the race as well. I know she disappointed at Exeter last time out, but that wasn't her true running. She's been a bit hit and miss this she year, has hasn't been. she? She's been in Newbury as well at a short mm. price. Yeah, she, she mm. has been very hit and miss, but... Mm. I just wonder if this is now the test that she wants. And when she's good, God, she's electric oh, over yeah. her fences. Mm. So, and, and I mean, she stays for three miles, no problem whatsoever. Again, it's going to ask a soft. different test for her. Yeah, mm. exactly. And like you say then, Jane, in terms of, I mean, we've had a great season in terms of the Jockey Championship and the Trainers Championship as well. And skeletons are chucking everything at the end of the season so is that right well, if Willie wins the national week could win the this but is yeah, it the the other I'm thing. mentioning he'll draw level with the two boys nearly oh Willie you have Willie winning <laughs> yeah, the national I didn't even think about that you have Willie Mullins winning the national I don't have him in the first five but the, the Grand National is going to have such a bearing mm. on on the championship none of us have a Paul Nichols horse in here has he got one even running? Has he got one that's even going to run? I don't well, think he's even got one in the race. Obviously, he's not going to finish in the first five. <laughs> no, yeah, obviously not on this basis. No, because this is gospel but now. So we're all fancying Willie Mullins to make the late charge then it for would the be title. Interesting, he'll, he'll have plenty of ch- chances. Like Capadano is a great chance. Mark Walsh is going to have some choice to make between I am Maximus, Meeting the Waters and Capadano. Capadano, yeah. Ooh. Who would you, if you were Mark Walsh, who would you ride? Uh, Capadano. Really? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he's more class than him. And again, Albeit proven. he might be more exposed than him, and I just don't trust him. No. What would you? Who would you ride then? If you uh, well, back in the green and gold again. Well, to be fair, <laughs> yeah. actually, you've solved your own problem. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever make uh, the wrong decision in in, in riding a horse in the national? National. Uh, no. I only ever. It only mattered once. Was Monty's pass? You so. never walk alone. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was a tough call, but. Thankfully, it worked out well. Um, <laughs> it worked yeah. out well. No, no, I generally, well, I had nothing else that mattered. I was third on Slim Pickens, had no choice. Um, I was fourth on Big Fella Tanks, who was a spare. I was meant to another one of Paul's, and Ruby got hurt, so I got upgraded. Um, no. They, they weren't significant anyway. So I don't think we've got any sort of general... Well, I guess Korak Rambler would have to be the general consensus winner. With Jane having him what as number one... What do you think is going to happen, Korak Rambler, if you don't have him in the first five? I know. <laughs> it's a very good question. I just <laughs> wonder how hard a race he had in the Gold Cup. For me, that for all that he showed every bit of ability, <clears throat> I just fear that may have taken more of a toll than we I, expect. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I was second on Al- Annabelle Fly to mm. album photo and he never came on the bridle in the Grand National he finished fourth but never went a yard it would have been very competitive had he not gone to Cheltenham um, a bit more time than this time I yeah. think there's a bit more time yeah. um, the Gold Cup wasn't his target no it wasn't no. they no. didn't but you know, there's, two, there's two ways of looking at that Jane. Jane there's two ways of looking at so if you're not fully Fully cooked yeah. for the Gold Cup, you potentially bottom out more so because yeah, you if, you're gonna, if you're not at complete peak, it will take its toll. I think the extra time, as Matty says, that's the key to him having a chance. But he's he's still potentially well handicapped. Mm. Oh um, yeah, you've seen horses running well in Gold Cups. So you go back, Hedge Hunter was second. He won the Gold Cup, but a low eleven stones. Fitzy's horse, Rough Quest, was second in the Gold Cup, and he won the national. Um, so Carrick Rambler, I think I think you t- touched on earlier on, Jen. He is well treated. That's mm. a big help. He, he minds is. himself a bit. He's clearly proven. <laughs> He's last year's winner around the course. And yeah, I, I, I hugely respect him, but he didn't fit my trends. So that's why I've admitted him. But I'm happy to go with your three's verdict, though, that he is going to be bang there. Another horse that we should probably just mention before we wrap up, because I'm guessing Van, uh, again, Batch is, uh, is Vanillier yes. and Jane has him on her list as uh, five as well. Now, he finished second in the race last year. So uh, we talk about proven form, then Batch around here. 
that that goes some in itself to finish second in the race. Yeah, definitely. And he, he carried 10-6 in the race last year, if I'm correct. And he's only got 10-8 this year. So mm. He snuck in there. Yeah, yeah, the handicapper yeah. has been very kind with that proven form, hasn't yeah, he, I this think time he's, round? And also he finished behind Iron Maximus into Bobby Joe. And Bobby Joe always seems to be a good stepping stone for horses, for horses mm. running well on the national. So just on that basis, I think he'll run another big race. And Jay? I'd have him higher up the list if he ran better in the Bobby Joe. I just mm. thought he lacked a little bit of spark. I'm just hoping that when he gets to Aintree and sees the fences that he'll light up, which which could happen. Um, it certainly happened last year. I think Sean Flanagan, the William Hill ambassador, will ride him. Uh, he knows him very well. And I just, I'm going for the experience around the fences and hoping that it'll relight his fire. Yeah, and... Like he's very got very few questions to have to answer, Barry. As Jane just touched upon there, proven over trip fences in the race then itself. It is just the fact of is that fire still there the same as last year? Big if though. I I was a little underwhelmed by him in the Bobby Joe. He needs to improve a lot on that. He has course form, brilliant performance last year. Um arguably he was he was got out of his ground a little bit. Um but I just, I'd like to have seen a bit more spark as well on the Bobby Joe. General consensus, I feel that Corrup Grambler should be getting first place in on our revised list. But from then on, it's an absolute free for all for who we've got for the <laughs> remaining four places in here. Definitely on my version of events, at least. Anyway, we'll stick Kitty's Light in there. All the same, just for an honourable mention. Hopefully, he gets a run in the race. So we're going to go with Corrup Grambler in terms of our top four for this year's at Grand National. Have we got it right, though? Will the defending? champ win again let us know in the comments section who you think is going to finish in the top five of the 2024 grand national but a big thank you to the team for all of their hard work big thank you to you for watching make sure you stay tuned because we have so much more content coming your way on inside track the debate brought to you by william hill well, thank you so much for watching Inside Track, the debate brought to you by William Hill. If you'd like to go back and watch our previous episode where we rank our top five Gold Cup heroes, then click the link in the video. 18 plus, please remember to gamble responsibly.